can we all just take a moment and celebrate give a round of a effing applause to the last eclipse in the gemini and sag axis thank you universe <laughs> what is up you guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here my name is tiny michelle and we are not all love light twin flames and unicorns over here on this little corner of the internet if you're not new here welcome back og it's good to see you yeah basically welcome to this sagittarius new moon solar eclipse video this solar eclipse is a very interesting one it's important for a lot of reasons like i said it's like the last eclipse that we have on this axis marking the end of the nodes in sagittarius and gemini which have been one hell of a fucking ride like holy shit information overload like literally seriously right things have got pretty fucking heated <laughs> so yeah this is a really big eclipse for that reason and we're gonna go over it why it's a big deal and really how what it's setting the tone for for the next six months because eclipses do mark a the next six month period so you want to make sure that you listen to the beginning portion of this video where I explain the eclipse what it means and what it's signifying and how we can see it playing out in the world and then I will just briefly touch on what it means for each sign also before we start really quick I'm working on the December horoscopes I'm running a little bit behind okay just I've had a lot to do regarding videos that I'm working on but also I got sick for a few days a few days that I was going to start working on them that kind of slowed me down but I am better now yeah uh, let's go ahead and get into this shit show. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get like real in this video, okay? Can we just like talk on a real level for a sack? Because this solar eclipse in Sagittarius is bringing up some shit that like needs to be faced and addressed in the world and all of us in the collective etc and it's been bringing up shit like the last 18 months this is really kind of marking the ending phase over the next six months like the waning phase of something that has been going on since May 2020 in our lives so somewhere in your life you have been seeing this Gemini Sag total access wherever you have Gemini and Sag in your chart and we're going to talk more about that when we get to the individual signs but this solar eclipse okay solar eclipse is a new moon that is near the nodes and the nodes are mathematical points in the sky that show us where the eclipses are going to be it's a new moon solar eclipse in Sag and it's near the south node now this is kind of contradictory a little bit because a new moon is like new beginnings and uh, the south node is like endings and the past and what's decreasing or karmic situations within our lives where we need to like let go and end and so there's kind of like a new beginning that's marking an ending which i always kind of say like new beginnings are endings at the same time so for some people at first this could feel like a new phase that is that deals with endings and for other people it could feel like an ending and then a new phase does that make sense so like it could it could feel like either <laughs> basically uh and it's marking this next six month period now what is Sagittarius? I talked about this in my December astrology video, so I'm not going to touch on it too much, but Sagittarius rules over our ideologies, our belief systems, our worldviews. On a larger scale, it can rule over foreign travel and foreign thought, other cultures. It's the broader, big picture kind of view. It also can rule over politics on like more of a collective scale and the moral law, morality, like what you feel is morally right. And for that reason, it can also rule over for religion on like a larger scale higher education like colleges and stuff like that so those kinds of themes are very prevalent with the south node in sag and so over the last 18 months since may 2020 we have seen a lot of karmic stuff coming up with those things right belief systems politics ideologies you know what's moral and what's not and like this moralistic way of thinking but within a group because jupiter the ruler of sag has been an aquarius and so it's been kind of like this mixture of like aquarius and sag where it's been kind of culty <laughs> it's been a little culty i'm not gonna lie this is like really saying like as i talked about in my last video like how has your beliefs changed over the last 18 months since may 2020 like what 
in your worldviews, your beliefs, your political views has changed since May 2020? Because I know a lot of people see the world completely differently since May 2020. And it's been, you know, the South Node in Sag has really been sweeping away old ways of looking at the world. It's been bringing out as well a lot of things that we didn't know, a lot of new worldviews, a lot of like broader truths and broader ways of looking at things, ideologies. It's exposed us to different parts of the world that we weren't aware of or different issues that we weren't aware of and different ways of looking at the world, different higher views and perspectives. And so now with the south node in sag and the solar eclipse this is an eclipse in my opinion that is really kind of like a disillusionment like it is ripping away our naive views about something like we are really kind of seeing something like how our old belief systems our old ideologies our old perspectives our old worldviews like did not serve us anymore there's something kind of being like replaced here and it's like really marking this ending of this era of like really being stuck in a certain ideology or way of thinking and i think like a really amazing way to put it is like i was watching this movie recently and it was talking about in the very beginning about how ideas are just ideas one idea can turn into so much it can like grow so much and become like this big thing to where like people follow it right like people really believe in that idea wars are fought over it people are killed for it like ideas are bulletproof you can't reach out and grab an idea and touch it or kill it or hurt it like it, it's just an idea right like but with a belief behind it right when you believe in an idea which is the sagittarian energy like the idea is gemini right where the north node is opposite of sag the belief in that idea is sag and that is when things can get kind of crazy not that all beliefs are harmful but like some of them are and we've been really seeing that over this last year and a half like where we can cling on to a belief and it's fueled by anger if someone else does not believe that or if someone else questions it or if that belief begins to break down or is called into question and I don't know about you but like my worldviews have changed so fucking drastically since May 2020. Like I was never, I never really paid attention to politics and that's why we've seen politics become so big. Like everybody for the most part is like really, you know, knows what's going on in politics and like a lot more younger people got involved in politics and it, it just became like really fucking crazy. And that is because that Sag South note is like, digging shit up to the surface and things being shown in a new way to people and tons of different perspectives, tons of different information. And that's where the Gemini North Node comes in. It's like, there's so many sides to a situation. Is there really just one truth? You know, truth is kind of subjective to the person and their experiences and the way that they look at something and belief systems really are just there to keep us safe because it's something that we can count on. If we believe in it, that, then we can count on it. And people get triggered by their belief systems when they feel their belief systems are being threatened in some way and they don't have any data or proof, Gemini North Node, to back them up. They don't have logic, facts, or et cetera to back them up. They get triggered and so they wanna defend their belief and basically come up with all this nonsense about why their belief is correct or they just label you and throw you in with some kind of group because you question their belief system because if that belief of theirs crumbles or if it falls then that means a lot of things right that means that it wasn't true and that they possibly are not comfortable anymore it causes discomfort or it causes insecurity or it causes a feeling of being no longer safe right and so they have to cling to that belief system or that ideology that like moral way of like moralistic dogmatic way of thinking to where it becomes like their truth and if someone else questions it then you know that, that that's literally what we've seen in history like so many fucking times like you know with religion and cults and like not being able to like 
have your own beliefs or question other people's beliefs and then like people killing you over the like over you questioning their beliefs like it's just insane like like i was saying like that movie said wars have been fought over it people have been killed over it like it, it's just crazy and so basically that is sag and that can be the shadow side of sag not saying all sages are like that or anything i'm just talking on a collective scale the sag influence and some of the shadow side to sag that we can sometimes see with this energy that is kind of what's coming up here where in your life has your worldviews your religious views, your political views, your ideologies, your belief systems on the world and and what things are and how things look, where has that changed? Like I said, mine have changed a lot. Like I was never really political and I wouldn't really consider myself political now, but I pay attention to it a lot more uh, because our world is just so up in the air. Like, and, and I know a lot of people feel this way. It's kind of like, I don't know what to do with my life because I don't know where the world is going, you know what I mean? And I was kind of stuck there for a long time. And I kind of realized like the Gemini North Node, like, and there's like a balance to it, right? It's not like you should be doing Gemini and not Sag or vice versa. Like there really is kind of like a balance to it. And what I kind of realized is like, look, like I got way too crazy living in the world, right? Like there used to be a day where we didn't have this much information, where we didn't know what was going on in another country or whatever, you know what I mean? Like we just focused on our community right here, right now, you know what I mean? Like our town, our village or whatever. So it, I don't know, I just kind of got to a point where I was like living so, so much and what was going on everywhere else in the world or across the country or whatever. And it just became too much to where I was like neglecting my present. I was neglecting my like real life, my real experiences. And I was like letting kind of like other opinions and perspectives and views kind of dictate my own like thoughts, like instead of just going off of what I was experiencing rather than what, <laughs> what someone else said or somebody else's like view of the situation you could say like i was just kind of like oh well even though that kind of contradicts my own experience like whatever right like and i think a lot of people are doing that like kind of not paying attention to their own experience they're right here because like i like you get on freaking the internet or whatever and you're like oh my god the world's ending i need to start like stocking up and like getting ready like the apocalypse is coming like holy shit you know what i mean and then you <laughs> and then you like look out your window and you're like well i don't know everything fucking looks normal or you go to work and you're like yeah everyone seems fucking normal you know like besides some shit yeah there has been some things that have happened that have changed like you know what i mean the virus and the mask and the mandates and you know all that craziness but um other than that it's like you know what i mean like the buildings aren't burning like at least here you know what i mean i know in some some places it did get that crazy but for the most part okay like i know you can you can poke holes in this argument a little bit okay but still for the most part like in your immediate environment like are you neglecting that are you neglecting like right here right now because i know i was right like i know i got really fucking lost in all of the different news about everywhere in the world and what was going on and so i had to kind of find a balance like it's not that i because i also know people that were ignoring everything and like using right here right now as an escape and just kind of like oh well my life isn't my life isn't affected so why would i care you know what i mean and eventually yes it can ripple over and affect people's lives but we have to find a balance again you know what i mean and so anyways all that to say that with this sag south node it's like the beginning of the end to an old belief system it can bring up a lot of past karmic situations in regards to old ideologies worldviews belief systems etc now some other things that are happening over this next like week or two that i really wanted to talk about is 
Mars is going to square Jupiter, and this could, Mars is in Scorpio, Jupiter is in Aquarius, and this is important. I think this is gonna bring up a lot of like exaggeration. Once again, like moralistic thinking or like some kind of moralistic movement. I think that this could definitely bring up like activism, protests, like all kinds of stuff like that. It's just gonna get like these next few weeks, it's just building to this like really chaotic, energy so just be on the lookout for that but we also have venus finally like coming into her conjunction with pluto over these next couple weeks i mean she's basically already in range like she was only a few degrees off at this point so i mean i count that so with venus on pluto like we're gonna start really noticing those themes and i have a whole nother video i'm working on uh for that but basically just to give you some stuff right here you know pluto is the underworld death transformation rebirth you know what i mean like it is regeneration resourcefulness wealth and venus is resources money goods finances relationships love and harmony and so it's kind of like the dark side of money wealth love relationships harmony that is going to be pretty fucking big and i mean a lot of a lot of people immediately go to like a financial crisis or an economical crisis, which definitely could happen. But we could also just on a personal level really notice like themes of betrayal, jealousy, control issues, and power dynamics within situations that involve other people, whether our lover, our significant other, our friends, people in our lives, coworkers, whatever, like family, like we could just really tend to notice some darker shadowy traits coming up in our relationship lives or with money. Now you do really want to be careful speaking of that um, over this next week specifically because Mercury is coming into its square with Neptune and this is fucking shady and I talked about this in my last video but this is really shady. I think there's going to be a lot of really big lies and really like massive propaganda that's like really manipulative and shady it's like something is being i want to say like a cover-up for some reason like something's being covered up or glazed over like it's kind of like oh don't worry about that or like a story is being told a lie is being told this could also on the flip side though be like a lot of truth coming out or something being exposed or coming out that was a lie or that was an illusion it's like the the rose colored glasses are getting ripped off in some way. We're kind of like being forced to possibly see like something that we believed in that is not necessarily true. Like I could see that being something really big that happens. <laughs> this eclipse is happening right on the U.S.'s ascendant in Sagittarius, which is kind of a big fucking deal. Okay, so I think like the identity of the U.S., how we think about the U.S. is changing. Like our ideologies and our belief systems here in the U.S. are changing dramatically. Just because Jupiter, which rules this eclipse, is in Aquarius on the U.S.'s moon, this could also be something going public that also changes the view of the U.S. and, you know, just the face of the U.S., like how we're thought of. And I mean, that's already been happening, right? But like, I think that it's more so going to affect the people that live here, not just like people in other countries and how they think of us, but more so our own thoughts, how we think of ourselves. So yeah, I think like this is signifying a massive change in the identity of how we see the country and how we see the US itself. And it could have a lot to do with our financial ties, our economy as well, because the U.S. is Jupiter is in the eighth house. So this is definitely going to be, you know, bringing up likely like financial ties and things that have been hidden, debt, things like that, like taboo topics. And so we will see how it goes. Definitely watch out for that as well. But that is basically what I see with the chart for this solar eclipse, you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get into the signs. Let me know down below uh, if any of this resonated. As always, your rising sign will resonate the most. And let's go ahead and get into it. Alrighty, Sag, this uh, solar eclipse, this new moon solar eclipse on the south node, not directly on it, but pretty close by, is in your first house of yourself, your identity, 
Like, how much have you changed since May 2020? Your views on yourself, your ideologies on the world, what you want to bring into the world, what you want to do with your life, and who you are as a person, like, have been going through massive changes. You've been letting go of a lot, and you've probably been really driven to maybe even try to focus on, you know, either yourself or relationships like other people. Um, but you've had to make a lot of changes to who you are as a person, especially if you're a Sag Ascendant and how you think about the world, how you think about yourself, how you think about your life and life in general and what your, your place in the world and what you're here to do, you know? And thinking patterns and how those affect your day-to-day -day life and the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis what kind of activities or people you associate with, uh, what you're good at and what you have to offer others or what you have to offer the world is really coming up around this time of this solar eclipse. So that is basically where this is affecting you. Uh, I will also say that you could experience uh, some confusion within your family home life or your past with mercury in your sign squaring neptune uh this could also involve like the the urge to lie about something or not see something or rose-colored glasses being ripped off about a certain situation that you hadn't seen clearly um, or something to do with a family member in that regard. So you do want to pay attention to that. Uh, but yeah, this is a time where it's like a new you is being reborn while at the same time an old you is kind of ending, like an old version of you or your life is kind of ending. And so you could be really feeling like you're wanting to look towards the future at this time, or, uh, you know, that you are uh, needing to purge or get rid of certain things at this time that no longer align with you. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sag. Let me know down below if that ends up resonating, and we are going to move on to Capricorn. So for Capricorn, this solar eclipse is happening in your 12th house of endings, what's hidden in your subconscious, you know, kind of getting away from the world and society. Like this is really a time of reflecting on subconscious belief systems and ideologies that kind of drive you in your everyday life or that are even affecting your day-to-day -day life, your work, your routines, your health in some kind of way. It's like, how do you think about certain things and where do you kind of want to just like remove yourself from situations and just be in your own like kind of ideologies, belief systems and ways of thinking and not really take other, other considerations or deal with like small other little things that don't make sense to you you know what i mean and so this is a time that's really shining a light on like subconscious belief systems subconscious self-sabotaging belief systems that are holding you back and what's holding you back in your life and what needs to be let go of what needs to be purged and it's really marking kind of like an ending period where you are really kind of flushing out like old views belief systems perspectives uh, that's kind of kept you trapped or kept you kind of in vicious circles or that are like from the past. This could be a time where you're doing a lot of healing on what you believe or where you're really kind of questioning what you believe in some way. Um, and so those are some things that you could be seeing come up around this time. There may be something going on that's kind of like shady or behind the scenes. You could be involved or it could just be involved around you, but either way, you could be a little bit confused about how you feel about something or your perspective on something, like your perception may not be 100% clear over these next couple weeks with Mercury squaring Neptune um, and Venus and Pluto meeting in your sign. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. So. Moving on to Aquarius. So for Aquarius, this eclipse is happening in your 11th house of friends and social groups and, you know, your, your social networking and kind of like your goals and ambitions in your life, what you want to do in your life, uh, where you want to end up, your place in the world. 
and the kind of groups and social situations that you belong to. And so you could be noticing a lot of this coming up, like where do certain people in your life just not really have, like where are they just not really aligned in you, with you anymore? How has this area of your chart changed since May 2020? Uh, you know, how has the I ideologies of the groups that you're involved with or like-minded people in your life changed over these last, you know, 18 months? Like, have you ended up leaving behind old people or old social circles or whatever because your ideologies d just don't align? Um, or is that happening now? You know what I mean? This is marking some kind of new beginning when it comes to, you know, really getting comfortable and finding a new way to connect with people that may have different ideologies or belief systems or views, etc. So that could be coming up. Um, and we also have uh, the Mercury Neptune square happening in your 11th and 2nd. This is not a great time to be like super generous with money because someone may not be, I don't know, it's just kind of like confusing or unrealistic or possibly shady. So just keep that in mind. Like there could definitely be some shady stuff going on behind the scenes with people in your life. So just be careful of that. Like you may feel like you really wanna, like you may be being a little bit too naive with like a money situation or a situation involving resources. And so just be on the lookout for that. So moving on to Pisces. So for Pisces, we have this eclipse happening in your 10th house of career, reputation, public image, authority figures, your legacy, your, your future, your goals, your direction. And so this could definitely be a massive time that's marking some kind of significant period in that and to do with those things in your life, to do with those areas in your life where you are really either reconsidering a, a career choice, a career path, or what it is that you wanna do for a career, um, or you're considering the impacts that you wanna make on the world or that you have on other people. You're considering, you're reconsidering your ideologies, your perspectives, your views on the world authority, like, you know, kind of public figures or, uh, you know, things like that, who you look up to, what you're inspired by. And yeah, you are also possibly reconsidering your own, like brand, your own, like how you, how you put yourself out there to the world, your own reputation, what you wanna be known as as well, and your beliefs about the world, your views on the world, your perspective on the world, and how that aligns with your career and all of that. And so this could really be coming up for Pisces around this time. Uh, you could be, you could have been feeling like you've been really needing to like hold in your beliefs or kind of keep your beliefs about things that are happening to yourself, but this could really be a time where you're feeling a little bit more driven to speak out or say something, um, even if you are scared, it just, you just need to make sure that whatever you're speaking out about, that it's very clear because right now there could be... With Neptune in your sign and, you know, it, with Neptune in your sign squaring Mercury and Sag, it's like people could really misunderstand you easily over these next couple weeks or what you say could be kind of taken as like untrue or like something like that. And so you just want to make sure that like you know what you're talking about. Like if you do speak up about something, um or something along those lines. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Let me know down below if it does. And we are moving on to Aries. So for Aries, this solar eclipse is happening in your ninth house. Uh, and this is really about, about belief systems. You know, the ninth house deals, it's like the, the house of God, so to say. So it deals with getting out of your comfort zone, the way that you look at the world, politics, legal issues, the law, travel, you know, all of these different kind of things that really take us out of our ordinary day-to-day perspective and comfort zone on, on the way that we view things or ordinary environment. And so this is a time where you are like really seeing and reflecting on how your beliefs have changed and belief systems and ideologies that you've had to let go of, reflecting on possible educational pursuits and 
uh, you know, what the meaning and purpose of life is or what the meaning and purpose of your life is, like where you're going and, and where you feel meaning and purpose in life and what's important to you at the end of the day and what you wanna experience. And it's just like a massive time where you're kind of like seeing things in a whole new light and like at the same time are letting go of old ways that you used to believe. Um, and so, yeah, big, big time for Aries for that. So. Um, also, as well, I would just say that there could be over like this next week, you could be feeling a little bit like you want to escape or like you want to kind of mentally escape into um, certain ideologies or belief systems, etc. cetera, uh, with Mercury and Sag squaring Neptune in your 12th house. Um, but there can also be a lot of healing done here with that. So. I guess it just would depend on your own chart, but let me know down below if that resonates. Moving on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this eclipse is happening in your eighth house sector of other people's money, death, rebirth, and you know the taboo, taxes, debts, things like this. So this has been a massive spot that's been getting lit up for you since May 2020. And so you've been doing a lot of work. There's been a lot of focus here. You've been having to really like, you know, rearrange things or work on things in regards to your finances and what is important to you and, you know, dealing with possible difficult situations, but also uh, trying to have some kind of higher vision about it, trying to have some kind of you know, find some kind of meaning or purpose in it. And so this solar eclipse is kind of marking this ending period that you're moving into of dealing with those harder life changes, those big life changes that kind of can seem out of your control at times. And so this could be a time where you are thinking about making a pretty big life change in regards to, it could involve your career as well or your vision for the future um, and getting rid of any baggage or ties that are holding you back from doing that or things that have been out of your control and and how you can really work through those or let certain things go um, this could also deal if you have like a partner this could deal with your partner's money or finances or some kind of life change that they're going through as well this could signify kind of like a an, an ending period of that um, so definitely let me know down below, below Taurus I'm interested to know how Taurus if you're a Taurus rising how you're seeing this eclipse play out in your life so moving on to gemini so for gemini this is in your opposite sign of sagittarius so this is dealing with relationships and other people commitments agreements and any kind of significant relationships in your life and so this has been a really big theme for you relationships have since may 2020 and so this is marking uh, a pretty big ending period for a lot of Gemini risings, you could have had a lot of relationship endings. It doesn't just have to be like marriage or like a, a lover, but it could have also just been like significant friends or other significant relationships in your life. Um, but either way, this has been definitely a time where a lot of karmic stuff has been revealed regarding relationships in your life if you're a Gemini rising. And this new moon, solar eclipse, is signifying like this new beginning slash ending that's happening. It's like you're almost out, you're almost through, uh, but you are kind of wrapping it up. It, it could feel like in the relationship department, you're like finally, you're finally kind of seeing the lessons and learning the lessons. And um, yeah, and so this could definitely be a time where, you, like I said, you're finally kind of seeing things in a new light. You're seeing things in a different way. Uh, there can be a lot of healing to be found in regards to relationships. But uh, I also will say that you could also be seeing, like there could be like a rose colored glasses moment with a relationship or a certain relationship in your life versus your vision for the future with that person the long term have you been kind of wearing rose colored glasses to do with this situation or relationship that could come up around this time so moving on to cancer risings for cancer risings this eclipse is happening in your sixth house of health work the day-to-day -day kind of mundane things that you do that you don't really like, you know, get a lot of recognition or credit for, but that need to be done. Uh, and this area of life has been getting 
you know, has been kind of building since May 2020, where you've been having to do a lot of work here in your health, your day to day life, your routines, the mundane, etc. You've been really addressing belief systems and ideologies to do with health, work, job, you know, your routines and your day to day life. You know, this could just be like a, an ideology with your diet, you know, like what kind of diet you should be on or what you should do for health or certain health remedies or you know work uh, situations ideologies about work or day-to-day -day things and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and how that really plays into your life your lifestyle you know and so this is really coming up for you with this eclipse it's really kind of marking this significant ending and new beginning in for the next six months in this area where it's like you're finally letting go possibly of some kind of old ideology or view or perspective on health work etc and moving into something new or you're like something's finally kind of like full circle moment for you in some way what i will say though is that this could also be you kind of seeing through something, you know, like uh, where you've been really confused possibly about a certain situation regarding those sixth house themes of health work and, you know, your day to day, you know, jobs, chores, etc. that you're doing. It's like maybe you were seeing something or maybe you are seeing something over these next like next week or so in like a rose colored glasses way or not clearly. And that becomes clear uh, over these next next couple weeks and so watch out for that for cancer and let me know down below if that ends up resonating moving on to leo so for leo this eclipse is happening in uh our fifth house if you're leo rising like me and uh this is bringing up you know childlike energy where we have to where we have fun self-expression where we you know our, our romantic life our love life sexuality and also children and creation and so these are some of the themes you could see being brought up with our, this eclipse you know for leo's this this sag gemini axis hasn't been as difficult as other signs because it's been in really benefic houses for us and so this has been a time over these last you know 18 months since may 2020 where we've really been reevaluating what it is that we love and how we present that to the world right um and not just trying to hurry up and get to where we want to get but actually enjoying what we're doing in the process and also facing different ideologies and belief systems regarding what we're passionate about and our interests our hobbies um you know what really grabs our heart our self-expression also children and you know if we're if we're parents our children and um, love and romance and our ideologies and belief systems about that and we've been really forced to kind of work through that energy and learn a lot of lessons in this regard and this is really signifying a new beginning and what we love what we're passionate about where we want to have fun where we you know want to express ourselves and our creativity also uh you know marking a new beginning a new phase um with our children if we have children and with our love lives our romance etc so for some leos you could find for some leo risings you could find this could be a big time like that's been really big about relationships you know you could be really thinking about like if there's a certain relationship in your life is it serious do you see this person like being in your future and so for some leos this could be a time of endings with some relationships and for some this could be a time of new beginnings in relationships not necessarily brand new relationships but i would say more so if you're like already in a relationship um this could be a time uh, a time period where of like renewal of that relationship where you get closer but for some it could be a time where you are kind of like getting honest with yourself about you know what your your situation or that relationship maybe you weren't seeing them the right way or you weren't seeing things in the right way with mercury square neptune and so this could definitely uh be a time bringing up love passion relationships is the love and chemistry there do you feel like you can express like your true self with them do you feel like you can be authentic and goofy and have fun and you know that kind of thing with them um so those are the things that uh, leo rise Le leo risings could see coming up around this time you could be feeling more playful and and childlike as well around this time leo but definitely let me know down below if that ends up resonating 
Alrighty, so Virgo Risings. For Virgo Risings, this eclipse is happening in your fourth house sector of home, family, your personal life. Um, this has been a major area since May 2020 that has been getting really lit up. Uh, so it's really been about, you know, what do you want to, you know, what's going on in your home life? Like, where do you want to live? What do you want to do? Where do you want to, you know, build roots or build a foundation? And you've possibly had to move a few times at least um, or settle down a few times, you know, or redo something within your home. Like, um, or there's been a lot of family stuff coming up, a lot of past or childhood stuff that's needed to be worked through since May 2020 and ideologies and belief systems that have changed regarding family and home life and roots, you know, your beliefs about where it is that you want to live or, um, you know, your ideologies about like maybe you didn't really care about like the whole family thing or whatever and maybe now you do maybe now you view it as like really important um and you want to like settle down and like you know go somewhere where you can kind of like have more freedom and more space or whatever like um then that's just like an example but some of you guys could have like quite literally seen that coming up where it's like you are you've had a whole new perspective and viewpoint on your, fa your past, your family, um, and home and roots and, you know, a foundation in your life. And so anyway, so this could be a time where that stuff is coming up, where you're really moving into this last phase and starting this new beginning of what it is that you want to build and where it is that you want to settle down. Um, and so home and family things could be coming up around this solar eclipse and over the next six months still. So do just keep a lookout for that. Uh, with Mercury in your fourth house square, Neptune in your seventh house, this could kind of be, a, this could kind of be like a fantasizing or overlooking of something going on in regards to relationships, home and family. Uh, so do just be kind of like on the lookout for that. Something like that could be coming up. And this could also somehow involve your work, your health and your day to day life as well, um, where, you know, there could be something going on with your partner there or, um, you know, like you could be feeling like you just need more space or they could be feeling like they just need more space to be able to do day to day things. Um, so something like that could be happening. So. Moving on to Libra, this eclipse is happening in your third house of communication, siblings, higher education. Um, well, not higher education, that's ninth house, duh. But um, basically the day-to-day, -day, like your day-to-day -day environment, right? What's right here, right now? What do you think and what's around you and what are you interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis? It can rule a lot of different things like siblings, your neighborhood, your town, short travels, transportation, uh, you know, things like that. So the stores that you frequent on a day-to-day -day basis. So with this eclipse here, it could be some kind of new way of thinking or something new that you're learning or even something old that you used to think that comes back up that, you know, you're reflecting on around this time. This can also be a really big time for self-expression and creativity and uh, learning a new skill or practicing an old skill that you used to have uh, could come up around this time. This could have something to do with siblings, but you've been really learning lessons in this area since May 2020. And you've been really reflecting on your kind of like immediate belief systems and how your belief systems really like kind of filter your, are kind of like a filter for your thoughts and your day-to-day -day life and how they affect your thoughts and your day-to-day -day life and your thinking. And so that's what you could be seeing come up if you're a Libra rising. So moving on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this eclipse is happening in your second house of money, finances, and resources. Um, so those are the areas where you could see this coming up. Also possessions, priorities, and what do you own? And you know, what is close to you? What helps and supports you as a person and what helps and supports the lifestyle that you wanna live, basically. And so those are some things that you could be seeing come up around this eclipse. Sorry, it's getting dark by the way. Uh, but yeah, so you could also see, this could also somehow involve home and family as well, your home life, your foundation, your roots, 
your personal life in some way. Um, but over the last like 18 months, you've been really learning like a lot of karmic stuff with this area of life. So your second house, your money, your assets, etc. cetera. Um, and this is a time marking like a new beginning, but also like an ending of, uh, of in that area of life where you are really like learning new lessons and also how certain ideologies and morals play a part in your finances, money, and how certain belief systems play a part in your finances and money and uh, assets and wealth and possessions and resources and stuff like that. And so that could also be something that you're seeing come up with this eclipse. Uh, you do want to watch out though with the Neptune Mercury square. Uh, if you have children, especially this could be kind of like a time where, um, <laughs> like I could see like if you have uh, children or if there's like a lover in your life, like there could be something kind of unclear, confusing, or you could be figuring something out that you didn't know or seeing something that you overlooked to do with maybe like you were giving them money, but like the money wasn't used for what they said they were gonna use it for or something like that. Be careful with gambling and just be careful. And even if it doesn't involve someone else, it could just involve like, maybe you're trying to buy something um, for your children for Christmas or for somebody else or whatever. And it there could be something wrong. Like you could end up getting scammed or something like that. So just be on the lookout for that kind of energy like the next week or so. There's some shadiness in the air there. So just be careful. But anyways, that is all Scorpio. And for all of the signs, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're still here, that is it for this video. And I will see you guys in my other videos.